Lucky Spencer, still caught in Sidwell's twisted game, finds himself in a situation far more precarious than anyone could have imagined. Sidwell has taken an unusual interest in him, almost as though Lucky's very presence is a puzzle the man is determined to solve. Sidwell's fascination with Lucky, and now with Holly Sutton as well, has trapped both of them in a dangerous web of deceit and manipulation. The question is whether Lucky and Holly can turn the tables on Sidwell. Will they manage to outsmart him and dismantle his carefully constructed empire? The stakes couldn't be higher, and with every passing day, the grip Sidwell holds tightens, leaving the duo with fewer options. Their only chance lies in finding a way to expose Sidwell's weaknesses, but can they succeed before it's too late? Time is running out, and the consequences of failure could be devastating for both. Meanwhile, back in the heart of Port Charles, Sasha and Cody find themselves embroiled in their own tense confrontation. Standing on Quartermain property, facing the imposing and ever-grim Tracy Quartermain, the odds don't seem to be in their favor. Tracy, with her cold and calculating demeanor, is not easily swayed. Yet, despite her stern exterior, there is a sliver of hope. Thanks to a heartfelt conversation with Stella, Tracy has managed to work through her issues with Cody, albeit grudgingly. It's far from a smooth resolution, but at least it's a step in the right direction. However, the fragile peace is tenuous at best. The Quartermain family is never without its drama, and while it seems like things might eventually be fine and dandy, no one should be too quick to relax. The peace between Sasha, Cody, and Tracy could unravel with just one wrong move, and everyone involved is well aware of it. Not far from this unfolding tension, another curious scenario is playing out. Since Martin's return to town, he's been neck-deep in legal matters, representing Alexis Davis with his usual sharp legal acumen. However, there's a glaring omission in his life, Lucy Coe. Lucy has been notably absent from Martin's narrative, and questions have begun to circulate. Why hasn't he mentioned her? Why has he kept his distance? The answer to that becomes clear when Lucy finally corners Martin, demanding answers about his sudden silence. She wants to know why he hasn't called, why he's avoided her. The confrontation is inevitable, and Martin's attempt to dance around the issue isn't going to hold water for long. Lucy, being the determined force of nature that she is, won't let him off the hook easily. Their conversation will no doubt uncover hidden emotions and unresolved tensions that could reshape their relationship. On another front, Robert Scorpio and Diane Miller have been conspicuously absent from the social scene lately, sparking curiosity about what might be keeping them so occupied. The two are known for their fiery debates and their tendency to clash over almost everything, so it's only a matter of time before their paths cross again. This time, though, the subjects likely to stir the pot are none other than Sonny Corinthos and Holly Sutton. With both names bound to evoke strong emotions and differing opinions, Robert and Diane's next encounter is sure to be a heated one. Whether they find common ground or end up at odds once more, their relationship is one of constant sparks, both intellectually and emotionally. It's the kind of dynamic that keeps everyone guessing. And then there's Brennan. Ever the persistent figure in Carly's life, he's been feeding her regular updates. Though the news isn't exactly heartening, Brennan's careful not to overstep the boundaries of his role with the WSB, reminding Carly that his hands are tied when it comes to fully intervening in the crises swirling around her. Yet his updates aren't without a personal touch. In a manner that's equal parts charming and relentless, he continually reminds Carly of the dinner or drink she owes him. His persistence might be annoying, but it's also disarming in its own way. As Carly listens to his updates, she's left wondering just how much more Brennan knows and what he might want in return for his information. The tension between them, though laced with flirtation, underscores a much larger game at play. Is Brennan truly just a helpful ally, or does he have an agenda of his own?